And on the news, there's stories about the pestilence outbreak. Is that what this is? Was my mom infected? No, Ruby. No. I'm 12 years old, Alex. I can handle anything. Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again for, for the first time in quite a while with a video on Supergirl Season 3. And this is going to be my review for the finale for this season, otherwise entitled Battles Lost and Won. I have to read it off because it's an unusual finale title in my opinion. But yeah, obviously before we go ahead, if you have not watched the episode and you like Supergirl, don't watch this video. Go watch the episode yourself because a decent amount happens and we're going to be going over the big parts of the finale in this video. But of course, if you have watched the finale and go on to enjoy this video, it would be awesome if you could drop a like and it shows your support. Let me know in the comments section down below your various opinions on what I say in this video as well as your general thoughts on this season of Supergirl and this finale. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. So as you would have known, I just said, this is my first Supergirl video in quite a while. I stopped reviewing it maybe just after the mid-season break, maybe, or when it came back from its return, maybe an episode or two after that. Um, so the lead up to this finale wasn't great. I think Supergirl's been a bit lackluster in the second half, to be completely honest. The first half of it was great, had a really great opening half. Maybe the break with Legends coming in killed it a bit, but... Everything after that, it was just a bit lackluster, apart from maybe two or three episodes. But essentially, in this lead up to the finale, we had Rain and Sam split. They're two different entities. And then we also saw the whole Argo thing happen, where the, the sisters of Argo, if you want to call them, like the sisters of Rain, those three old women, came down and uh, helped uh, Thomas Koval and stuff bring the real Rain out. It was really confusing, those like, episodes leading up to this one. It was just a lot of stuff happening. But anyway, a lot of people were asking, like, where's Superman? Like, that's an issue sometimes with Supergirl, is the whereabouts of Superman. Like, why isn't he helping? Well, we find out he was saving Madagascar in uh, this episode, in the opening scene. But the opening scene itself, I thought was pretty well done. It was a, cool, a lot of cool action scenes. People were pointing out to me on my Discord server, when we were watching the episode live, as well as one or two people on Twitter, that they reused that scene from episode one. I want to say of this season, I think, something like that, like an earlier episode this season, that scene in that finale with the, like that, all that action and stuff falling down was just a reuse of a shot from a previous episode with some different stuff put in the background. I don't know if that's true. Let me know in the comment section down below. I didn't really look any images up to see if that was true, but apparently that was the case. Now the mirror and death was, we knew it was going to be happening. It just depended on when it was going to happen in this episode and happened obviously in that, you know, fairly early opening intro scene with him basically like melting into the ground with John over him. Pretty emotional. That and another scene towards the end were probably the biggest emotional uh, or heart hitting ever parts of the episode. But one thing we find out, which you would have to think is going to play into next season at some stage, if not be the complete big bad for next season and other things that come in between could just be like a little things to knock you off what's really going to happen. But we find that, you know, Pestilence, them defeating Pestilence saved millions in the future, but also saved someone else, a distant relative or a relative of Brainiac 5, an evil person or an evil AI. Otherwise, you know, they don't name him, but it's obviously Brainiac. Now, the big question around this is whether Supergirl can use Brainiac because Krypton was using him on sci-fi. Um... I think they should be able to. Like, I don't see why they wouldn't be able to, but uh, maybe that he's not going to be next season's villain. Maybe he could be season five or something like that, and they're just setting him up. But we'll have to wait and see. But due to that, to everything being saved in the future, Brainy himself, so Brainiac 5 can't go up there because of what Brainiac, or Bra evil Brainiac is doing. He can't go back there. So someone else with, a, you know, with some intelligence has to go back there. So, hello, Win. You're going to the future. So, uh, Win and Monel are uh, going to be packing their bags and are going to be going to the future as we do find it like that tech that Wynn had built that that DO agent used but still died using at the la uh, last episode. That tech he's built is like the stepping stone for like really advanced technology in the future. So Wynn's going out there to the future to assist in what's happening there. Now, as we know, uh, Jeremy Jordan, his name is, who plays Wynn, is still in next season, but he's a recurring character, which means it could be in just a handful of episodes or half the episodes. Unclear, but he's going to be showing up next season, but just not a regular cast member, while Brainy or Brainiac 5 will basically be taking Wynn's role on the show. Now, it was pretty crazy, that scene, where we're in, like, the, the Rain hideout, if you want to call it, and Rain just goes full-on psycho and just sees, like, shooting laser beams at everyone. 
all like the eye beams and just kills everyone apart from Jean and obviously Supergirl. And I was like, oh, this is interesting because everything that had been in the promo material and the trailers, I think had been shown up to that point in the episode. So it was highly, you know, you could believe that maybe Sam, uh, Sam would have died there, that mon would have died there, that uh, Kara's mother would have died there, Allura. They could have all died because I'm pretty sure at that stage, as I was saying, all the promo material, like photos and trailers and sneak peeks, everything shown in those had been shown in the episode up to that point, I'm pretty sure. So at that point, you could believe like, yo, these people are dead. Maybe it's just mon and Kara that are alive. Uh, but obviously, Kara... <sighs> makes the ultimate sin that you can do in the DC TV world. Well, I guess if you're Barry Allen, that's time travel. So she uses the Legion ring to time travel back to that point and stops Sam from actually stabbing Rain so she could do her own thing and well, get rid of Rain. Uh, it will take her to that like, underworld place and defeat her there. So, um, yeah, time travel. It's, uh, it's, well, if you're, you're Legends, it's okay. And if you're Barry, you're not. So, how will Kara be dealing with this? We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But essentially, a lot of people leave the show. As I was saying, Monel leaves the show. Wynn leaves the show. Wynn's like leaving scene was longer. And I thought they were dragging it out a bit, but it was still a nice scene, I think, just because Wynn had been there since season one. And I think Wynn's been very poorly mishandled on the show. Um, but yeah, so he gets a good farewell scene. But we also find out that Alex... Oh, actually, yeah, Alex is becoming the new director of the DEO and Jean's like stepping down. He's still going to be in the show, obviously. He's just stepping down to be uh, a bit more relaxed after, you know, t spending time with his father and stuff like that and just wants to, you know, do his own thing. So Alex is the new director of the DEO, which I think people have theorized about. If not, it might have been leaked. It might have been spoiled by certain accounts. But I think people were predicting that that was going to happen. So yeah, it is going to be interesting to see how all that plays out next season. Once again, another character that's been poorly missing on the show is James Olsen, and he outs himself as Guardian. So I don't know where that's going to lead next season. Um, is he still going to be Guardian and people just know that he's Guardian? Because doesn't this put himself into danger by just people that knowing who he is? They could just come to Catco and shoot things up, and it would be his fault because people know that he's his vigilante. So got to be interesting to see how they deal with that next season. As I said, James has been a very, very poorly handled character, and they just seem to slot him where they can. Um, so they might do something good within next season that they might give them a good storyline around that, but we'll have to wait and see, obviously, who knows what they're going to do. But really, the end scene, like the big cliffhanger scene was interesting. We have Lena with that purple rock and she wants to do more tests on it. I don't know what, it was like an H, started with H. I, it was just, I was just calling it purple glowing rock whenever it showed up and when I was talking to people about it. So Lena has the purple glowing rock and essentially we go back to the scene where we have Supergirl and Rain and Sam fighting. We see that black smoke go up and then we cut to Siberia, well actually it was the Siberian border, I think that's the, exactly what it said on the screen. And I was like, okay, is this rain that's going to be showing up here? Like what's going on? Who's going to be showing up here? And it's Kara. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Why the hell is she here? So is that our Kara or is that a time displaced Kara? Is this another Kara that was from that time and, and, and is displaced? and is in Siberia. Is that what's going on there? Or is that actually our Kara? And then when we come back in season four, Kara's not gonna be there, and that car is actually in Siberia. Like, if anyone wants to clarify in the comments what's going on, is that another Kara, or is that the Kara that we're meant to be with, and that because of time travel and, sh and stuff, she's ended in Siberia? Let me know in the comments. I probably just saw giving you a migraine just saying all that, but please let me know in the comments what you think about that. But in the Discord, people were saying Overgirl, it's going to be Overgirl, which is like, yeah, I can understand that if they hadn't done Overgirl in the Crisis on Earth X crossover. I don't know if they're going to do that. I don't know if they'd have her be Overgirl. So I was thinking, is this going to be their take on almost like the, the Red Sun Superman storyline? You know, being in, like, in Russia, but obviously this is Siberia and stuff. Is that what they're going to do? But it's going to be like Red Daughter, Supergirl? Is that what's, I don't know, is that what they're doing? Let me know what you think in the comments because that's the cliffhanger for season uh, three heading into season four. And also, this is the, the correct time to bring it up. Melissa Benoist, who plays Cara Danvers or Supergirl, is on Broadway until August the 4th. And they start filming Supergirl season four, I think July 11th or like, you know, like early part, like that middle, like that second week, end of the second week of July. So she's not going to be on set for three weeks. So if that's the case, it would make sense that the whole time travel thing displaced Kara and put her in Siberia and in National City, no one's there. Um, it's just obviously James, I guess, and she's stuck in Siberia. That's the way 
it sounds like it's going to work because I was expecting something to happen at the end of this episode where it would explain why Kara wouldn't be in the opening couple of episodes of Supergirl. So maybe that's it. The whole her going to Siberia, that's our actual Kara and she's displaced and maybe her memory's a bit how you're going and not there. I don't know. It's confusing. I'm interested to see how they handle it because it's a bit messy. Not the actual season what's happened now, but just the situation they're in going into season four. But overall, this finale, I thought the pacing was terrible. It's one of the worst paced episodes I've ever seen of any DC TV show. Now, that doesn't mean the actual episode was bad. The pacing, though, was terrible. Like, it was action scene after action scene. Then you just go to a thing with, like, zero, like, tempo. You're just sitting there. There's just people talking, like, a pretty boring conversation. There's action, 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 boring conversation. Action, action, action. And it was just like, this is too much. Like, this is... It was just... Too much action going on. Like, fair enough, in a finale, you start with action, and then you have some character moments, maybe another action scene, some character moments, and then you usually finish off with a big battle, and then maybe five minutes of just setting some stuff up and, like, you know, wrapping things up as well. But this was just too much going on at the wrong times. But the episode itself was still fairly enjoyable, wrapped up what needed to be wrapped up with, like, Monel, Win, Brainy, set things up for next season, Allura, even some Lena stuff, and then had the cliffhanger leading into next season. Obviously, you can decide for yourself what that cliffhanger means. But funnily enough, I still think it's the strongest Supergirl finale we've had. The season two one wasn't that good. The season one one, let's not even talk about that. So this was actually the, the strongest finale the show's had, even though it was a bit all over the joint, but still had some, you know, enjoyable moments to watch, some good character moments, and did a good job at wrapping stuff up while setting stuff up, uh, setting stuff up as well. But in regards to season three as a whole of Supergirl, the first half of the season was very good. It had maybe one crap episode, which is like episode, it's like one of those middle episodes in the first half, but everything else was really solid and it set stuff up well going forward. Rain, Rain was the most interesting villain of the whole DC TV thing for that season. But just that black half, it didn't help that had that massive break with Legends coming into the time slot. That was a really big mistake by CW, but still, Regardless of that, the writers should, should have still done a better job and the showrunner st still should have done a better job at just making it better. And it just felt like leading into the finale as well, there's like four or five episodes leading up to the finale. Just not much happened. You know, I, I don't think spending so much time on Argo was a good idea as well. Um, that should have been a really short thing. Um, that's just me personally. I just didn't really care for it, to be completely honest. Um... But yeah, uh, I think this is still the strongest season of Supergirl, regard even though it has its flaws, just because season one or two of Supergirl just weren't very well done. So yeah, hopefully it just keeps going up and we get a better season than this one next season, just because it is still improving. Season two was better than season one, season three was better than Super uh, season two, so hopefully season four is better than season three. But thanks for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like and it show support. Let me know in the comments section down below. Um, yeah, your general thoughts on the episode as well as your general thoughts on my review. I will be doing a video around the time I'd normally bring out a trailer breakdown after a review, and it'll be about Kara and what's going on with her. So there's a couple of options that they could be going there, so keep your eye for that video. But yeah, if you're new to the channel as well, be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you, uh, catch you guys later. Goodbye.